Welcome, welcome. I have to go ahead and do an experiment, everybody. This is kind of different. I haven't done this before. I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, have something on the screen as I talk. Um, amongst other things, if you haven't been here before, um, there's a bunch of different things that we can talk about. But today, one of them is going to be um, perhaps the ability to uh, go ahead and communicate online using a number of tools. I've been playing around with this and I don't know if I can pull it off, but part of it is you, oh, as you're looking, this is definitely going to change because I've got to change it so you see anything. There we go. This is part we're experimenting with. Can I show you at one point a picture in front and also be able to go ahead and talk to you on the background? I'm actually experimenting for other things and uh, you'll figure that out in a few minutes. This is uh, music, for example, and for many of you who don't know it, um, I have some music out there and I want to go ahead and be able to um, share with you sometimes. This is something that was made years ago and I'm experimenting right now being able to go ahead and mix these while I'm sharing many of the things I'm trying to do. This is a matter of things that were done. I'd love for you to listen to some of these things later on. But right now, I was just trying to show you that there's a selection. And the selection allows us to go ahead and discuss some things. Like when that point comes into your life. When you decide, gosh, what am I going to do? What is that light? way at the end of the tunnel. See, I dug this particular tunnel myself. This goes down in the ground after my son passed away. And it was my way of going ahead and creating the hole in my heart. I felt I'd been left alone. You ever feel that way? Yeah. It's a crazy feeling. One of the things we're trying to do with this today is is to be able to figure out how to switch back and forth if I can reverse the camera while I'm talking, stuff like that. It's difficult to be sure. It looks like it's gonna work. Now, I'll probably turn this off, but the reason I said it wasn't really for guys that are bald is because the discussion is something of one of, um, of our hair. Have you noticed that the leaders of our country have short hair unless they're females and even for some reason some of them are inclined to have short hair now do you think there's anything any meaning to long hair do you think there's any purpose why did God put hair on your head so if you listen to the song fool's errand. What does that mean? Well, the truth is, it means a lot of things. It could be something that you start off on, and you think you've got something great. And then, other people come along and say, ah, not so much. Who would that be? So, this is sort of a story. How do you wake up? Come out of that self-destructive sleep. How do I do that? I have to do it through this phone. And I don't know how, other than to explain. It can be fixed. And I do know. And I want to share it the world has broken. In, in the process of it, we've lost a lot of very significant things. Amongst them is a sense of who we are. What does long hair mean? What is the point of it all? What do you see? Just because 
I have long hair. I have no beard. I shave. A concession so that I might speak to you today and be accepted. I'm not as crazy man, but perhaps someone who might have an answer. What's the answer? Who's asking questions? Who cares? Well, trust me, many care. This is a video, and it's gonna run a long time. But you know what? If your attention span isn't long enough, you may linger in misery for a long time. People that don't get it, that are miserable in the midst of heaven, what is hair? These are antenna. They're made out of matter that we absorb through our nose, our mouth, the air we breathe. And they're antenna that are able to go ahead and sense very long bands of energy because they're long antennas. In case you haven't studied physics and frequency. The antenna allows you to receive signals as long as that. So, here's the point. There's a long story. It goes back in history. A long ways. It involves hair. Long hair. And beards. Symbols of power. Did you know that? Yeah. Teeth. Symbols of power. Eyes. What can you do with your eyes? You know they emit photons. That's why you can detect somebody who's staring at you. Even from long distances. Yeah. We have other senses beyond our eyes. In case you aren't aware. We have smell. We have our ears if we're lucky. Then we hear sound. Sound might be a word, but from that word comes much. Hey, I'm actually seeing people. Marlia manifest. Thank you, thank you. I am. This is a long video because I'm transforming what I do, how I speak, and how I try to get a message across. It's time. All of us. You're one of them. Time for us to go ahead. And light up, shine, show that getting old, even like me, doesn't mean that you're going to die away. No, in fact, at 66, we just hit our prime. Yeah. So this is about why I said no baldy guys, because some guys get offended. I mean, literally offended. I walk up to them, and because they don't have hair, somehow it becomes a problem. If you're tall. For some guys, short's a problem. Short hair or no hair. But do you know the story behind hair? Why the Indians and Native Americans and others in the past wore their hair long? Wise women? Why did they do that? Because these are the antenna with which you sense things. Part of your instincts, part of your sensory system. Besides your nose, your eyes, your ears, your taste, your touch. This is part of your touch system. It also records everything that happens in your body every day, every night when you sleep. And that's why some of the Hindu monks shave their heads every day, so that they will really leave that memory behind and reincarnate new, fresh. Personally, somewhere down in the tip, maybe my son is still there, but I've, I've cut my hairs a couple of times in the last 11 years. But in theory, these are your antenna with your memories. You could actually someday, somewhere, take a strand of hair, and by understanding that all of this is knowledge, every night trapped part of the seven generations of knowledge trapped into your your dna and your rna which interprets dna and creates and how we express ourselves now we know through epigenetics and other things through trained placebo you can actually affect your own body and heal yourself overnight we can also use frequencies like rife generators and other things that these men have been um, Portrayed as crazy. Tesla, Schauberger, in their time. These are guys that, that broke the mold. They told them with dogma, kiss my ass. Some of them won Nobel Prizes. 
Some of them let their secrets be turned into weapons, sadly, and watched them destroy the world. Of my heroes, Schauberger refused, Tesla refused, and others. Here's the point, guys. Ah, Ross, English, that's a new one. So, yes, there's a lot of this we know about from the Hopis and from the Lakota. So, quite a few years ago, an elder wise woman who was a professor studying in New Mexico came out to visit. And I was just a kid in many ways, but she showed up about the right time. And that, that was really a very important point. Um, she showed up just at the moment that I was transitioning. And we had a song out. And it was called The Turtle Tribe. Just a short little song. But it was the idea that people were going to put their houses on their backs and be able to be mobile again. Now, I didn't mean in the toxic box on wheels syndrome that's gotten taken over by TV and is killing people slowly but surely, destroying their brains and infecting their bodies with endocrine disruptive compounds created by the vinyl and the lack of oxygen at night when they close the windows up to heat it or to cool it and the formaldehyde and the other chemicals. And I've talked about this for 15 years, and those that paid attention, well, they managed to drop the migraines and the vertigo and have healthy children and move out. But others won't. They don't get it, and they won't get it. There are people still doing fluoride that calcifies the pineal gland. It's proven. Autopsies show it. Why would you do such a stupid thing to one of the primary organs in your brain? I tell people all the time, don't stick your head next to the wall because there's an electrical field. Put there intentionally, with intention, 16 inches off the floor. It comes out 16 inches from the wall. That's enough to fry this much of your head if you stick it on your headboard on a pillow at night like you're supposed to because you've been trained to do so. And thus you won't produce melatonin at night, which normally during the daytime you produce with your skin. Okay, now the skin, now the spine doesn't have a lot of age spots. It's 67. I'm in the sun all day long. You know, so I don't have any tan lines. It's because I take my shoes off. And I move that energy instead of catching it in my body and causing inflammation, decay, and all these other things that'll happen if you don't, if you put rubbers on, if you wear prophylactics on your feet, if you don't make contact with Mother Earth. Mother Earth is negatively charged with high infrared radiation. It comes up through your feet, the same as it comes out of trees when you walk in the woods, the same as it comes out of the sun in the mornings through the day and evenings. And it goes through your skin to produce melatonin during the daytime, which at the nighttime your pineal gland produces, so that you can flush, ladies particularly, the lymphatic fluids, the lymphatic fluids out of your brain, flush it, and sleep better, dream deep, have REM sleep. And if you do that, you'll have a good attention span the next day, kids. How many kids with attention deficit because they're sleeping in electrical fields at night with their brains getting fried at night, their pineal glands, thinking that the lights are on because there's high energy there. So the pineal gland produces instead serotonin, which is what's supposed to happen when you open your eyes and see the sun. Serotonin charges you up, gets you going. Melatonin calms you down, lets you sleep in a deep REM sleep, reduce the inflammation in your body, and heal at night, assuming other conditions are appropriate, like you got air. Now, if three of you are living in a tiny house on wheels, and you are not getting air, you're not healing. In fact, you're degenerating every night. And if you don't get out and ground the next day because you have rubber shoes on, you're degenerating anymore. You cannot regenerate unless you ground. Now, ultimately, this will be broken up into a number of things. Ah, Annette, thank you so much for visiting. These things have been known for ages. This is not new information. Okay, It's been hidden for ages. So, as we find this out again, and we learn through the scriptures and other things that the natural path is, of course, grounding, breathing in the air, charging up this body, this vessel. If you honor it, it will treat you well. If you treat it like crap, you lose all your hair. This is biotin. It's, yeah, it's genetics. But genetics is a, is a, a propensity. It is not a guarantee that you will die of cancer. You will die of anything. You have a placebo power. You can overcome so many things. Epigenetics. Guys, I'm not talking anything there aren't other people talking about. I'm repeating so that you might go and listen to Joe Dispenza, Greg Brayton. Um, there are so many, uh, the Trace Amigos, the three of them. There's so many others right now teaching you all these things. I'm repeating. Sadhguru talks about some of this stuff. I'd love to listen to him, but you don't follow any one person. You try to listen, try to learn, try to grasp there's a lot more to this than any one person can comprehend. And there is no legion of light coming out of the sky on a screen, big screen near you, that will be probably, but it's, it's actually projected up there. 
The real Legion of Light is us, kids. Yeah. God sent us here for a reason. We got a job to do. God works in strange ways. Is anybody questioning that I'm not a little strange? Yeah. That's why. We're the ones that hang out at the fringe. Don't don't hang out with everybody. Why? Everybody doesn't want us hanging out there. So, I do a lot of things just to check to see if we have real sensors. You know, you can't piss off an algorithm, right? They don't have emotions. But you can piss off Facebook and go from 40,000 hits to 18 hits in a day. And nobody gets to see anything you write again. There are ways I found out years ago. If you want to get ghosted, I never knew what the word was. And I had the first cyber cafe in Texas, mind you. I'm not... You know, unaware. I was in Austin, Texas back in the days when this all started. When it cost $1,000 per gigabit. And I talk to people now with 248 gigabits in a cell phone. That's $248,000 in memory and $1,996 in the computer industry. It was incomprehensible. It was still Dick Tracy stuff even in those days. Now, I only had that open about three or four months. Wow. It looks like I lost some light. <laughs> and in that time, many things changed. Amongst them, right after I closed, there came along what was called a boom. And what was that? That was a, uh, oh, look at that. Ooh. Okay. God, that's not going to work, is it? Let's turn this back on again, see if it comes on. Look at that. Oh, I think I got it too hot. So, all right. This might stay on, might not stay on. The point of this is, I'm going to put a series together of cartoons. And the cartoons include a lot of things that I've tried to go ahead and get across over the years and haven't had much success. Let's see if we turn this around again. You've seen enough of me. There we go. Okay, so Darby at his desk. This is my one of my new classic cartoons. Classic, I say, because I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make more of them. And the idea behind this is to go ahead and to try to express, if I can, some of the things that I have on my mind, especially since... Anna's birthday is today. I forgot to mention that. So, once upon a time, many years ago, I came up with this idea that a worm, an earthworm, came to as an avatar. What's an avatar mean? That means that's the image he chose to take. And why? Because it didn't scare anybody. It didn't make anybody feel like, oh my God, Oh my gosh, it's some religion. No, it's no religion, guys. It's a fantasy story about what would happen if a young man who had this dilemma, he had this dream, and it was such a powerful dream that, that he ended up um, dedicating his life to doing something about it, to trying to write a story. And, and the story is really one that many people don't understand. And that becomes a problem. Um, because ultimately, you have to keep traveling around. You have to keep going places. Because if you're trying to bring this story, and this is about how do you go from rubble, basically nothing, to riches, through salvage. And it's a pure salvage outpost. These are outposts where people understand that the houses being torn down will be the houses of tomorrow if you don't waste it. And if you don't waste it, or if you're going to waste it, turn it into mulch and have some worms, man. Do you know worms keep the planet alive? If it weren't for worms, earthworms and such, there would be no aeration in the soil, no, no holes to carry the water down and the oxygen down underneath the crops. And we put all this crappy stuff on there that Monsanto and others make, and it destroys the world, man. It destroys all these incredible, incredible things like worms and bees and so much of that that I've tried to talk about over the years. And as I try to talk about these things, sometimes it gets difficult because the people don't really want to hear that. They want to hear something short and sweet. And so what I'm trying to do next is to go ahead and create this series of cartoons and maybe through cartooning express what's going on out there. Oh, that's turned sideways, you know, and this is supposed to be kind of giving everybody an idea that we're about to get hit by a couple of different winds. They're called winds that, um, oh, that's not good, um, are coming across from the solar system. And by solar system, I mean, this is the, oh, there we go, this is the view of the world that 
there's possibly another sun behind us that we can't see. Now, there are some people that share this view. What does that mean? Well, there's supposed to be a blue kachina behind us, and there's winds coming up behind us now that are actually stronger than the winds in front of us. Normally, the winds from our sun over here, those winds are normally at 1.2, 1.5, believe it or not, million miles an hour when they get cooking, like 700 kilometers per second like they are this week. 700 kilometers per second, 60 seconds to a minute. 60 minutes to an hour. Holy baloney, right? So from our bubble over here in Salvage, Texas, and with Rubbles coming in to talk to Darby again, we're about to go ahead and share with the world what we see. All the plants and all the bees and all the other beings on the planet, and this being our planet. Now, normally we just have these shields at the front protecting us. But recently, and I've sent a lot of pictures up online, and real life stuff doesn't impress anybody, so these are going to be parts and broken up into a series of cartoons explaining there's a cosmic wave of energy. And as it hit Betelgeuse and Neptune and Saturn and Jupiter, it changed their planets. And somehow or another, likewise, we're being hit from the back by something, and as it's being hit, our shields on the backside are lighting up. Go to Ishwa. Go to the science. Go to the satellites and see this is happening. And so what's about to happen is it's about to search some really big pulses of energy our direction. And that's because this is behind us as we get into the right spot. We're in the middle between this conflict of energies because this is producing one form in an ultraviolet we can't see. And this is producing another form that we can't see. And there's even a possibility there's another one of our mated suns. At least there's two suns in almost all solar systems and sometimes there's three. In our case there may be. So as this one shows up, and this one turns from the orange we were as a child to the white it is now, and a red sun that might be around the corner showing up too one day, who knows? And how far away does it have to be to affect us? If this is coming first. Now this wave of energy is affecting our Schumann resonance, and I've tried to explain to everybody what on earth is Schumann resonance, and most people got no clue. And I understand that. I really do, because it's difficult for everybody out there to study all this stuff all the time. And so I've put a lot of stuff online to try to express and show people what is the Schumann? What, what does that mean to have a Schumann resonance? Um, because for a lot of people, they don't understand that it affects your health. And so this is a real good example. This is in, in right now in Italy. This is their, their gauges. Now some say, oh, it's lightning. Well, there's no lightning when this is happening. And these, by the way, when you see this, this is normal. Way down here on the bottom. There should be nothing there. All life on Earth has been operating on this. And then this started about three years ago. And nowadays, this is what's happening. And this means it's over the gauges, don't even go as high as it's going. And that's how much energy is pouring into the planet. And that energy is happening, happening all the time. But for most people, they're not aware. It doesn't matter, right? And they don't even know if you watch the moon. What the heck happened with the moon? Well, the moon isn't like it used to be. If you're not paying attention, and please, 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 go out and pay attention to the moon. Goodness. It isn't that hard to see that the moon is rolling at night. Except the problem is the moon does not roll at night. We roll at night. Our view of the moon rolls at night. How is that possible? Well, when you start understanding that the axis of the planet changed, and it's now accepted, even NASA has admitted it. Yeah, NASA. Never a straight answer. So what you're seeing right here is these winds that are coming up the back, Okay, and this is our shields. This is a normal scenario, but we don't normally have this up here. Because if you look over here, that's wind speeds and stuff. Now, these things are important to some people. And why are they important? Because you can interpret that. That's called science. And what does science do? That allows you to understand that this interaction, this little cartoon I've drawn, is actually something that's going on. And what does that mean when it happens? Well, it means that you're going to have ripples in our atmosphere. And these are frequency ripples. And so I have ears. If I'm looking at a balloon and there's a really heavy-duty bass speaker next to it, that sucker is going to ripple and shake and go on. But if I don't have any ears, I'm going to look at it in sheer wonder. How did that happen? So I built once upon a time the ship off Salvage Dreams up upon a hill. And this hill is a mound. And the mound collects negative ions and sends them out through the top. Yes, that's true. Every time you see a hill or a mountain, it sends the negative ions up to the peak of it. And then they send out, and this is all positively charged in the air. And so the air has a positive charge in the clouds and everything. So as it compresses downward because the magnetosphere is collapsing, and that is because of the changes in the magnetic fields. Now, we know this stuff is going on. Who tells you? Well, for the most part, nobody. This is an expansion of showing you what's happening to our... our this is a, a... Normally, it should look like this over here. 
And this is when we get hit by these charges, these blasts of energy, as the Earth absorbs and, and then expels energy like a capacitor. And so as it's doing that, you say, why? Well, it's getting hit from here on one form, positive energy and protons and stuff. And it's getting over here, it's getting hit with negative. And this is a wind so strong that it's now countering the winds coming from here. And we're seeing winds that should be hitting us hard and aren't hitting us. Why? Because this is actually coming from our butt. And it's heating us up from the butt end. And you say, how can anything, how can that happen? Well, the truth of the matter is, I'm not here to explain all that to you. I'm just here to go ahead and wake you up to the fact that it's happening. And if you don't believe it's happening, or you don't choose to believe it's happening, do some research. Go out there and see the facts. This is a big one right here. For example, if you want to go out and look at Windy and see, this is rotating that direction. That way. It's supposed to go this way. That's the top of the planet. This is Texas down here. Now, if you tilt the planet and you spin it at a different angle to the sun, different parts of the planet are going to heat up. Doesn't that make simple sense? It should. And so someone says, well, huh, you got to tilt the planet. And mankind can't. Oh, yeah, now they're saying, yes, mankind tilted the planet. They melted so much ice. Well, guess what, folks? It happens on a regular basis. It really does. This is not new stuff. This is simply trying to explain to everybody that when these things happen, when we go through these cycles, the Earth actually takes a shift. And when the shift of the Earth happens, and it's this much, the spin, where the sun hits it, changes dramatically. So, when you go into these periods, the Earth shifts, the water shifts, the seas shift, Africa becomes a giant ocean again, and you have all these other things that will happen. How? Well, they happen because. And what's the because part? The because part is because of the changes. Now, most everybody's dropped off of here, and I realize that. And it's not intended to be something to stay and watch. You can come back and pause it later. I'm going to actually download it later and break it up and edit it. But the point was, we have to make these things. Uh, yeah, once upon a time, I brought the crabs to the USA, by the way. Spread the crabs all the way across the USA. Imagine that, 25 years old. What a way to try to climb to fame. Ha, huh, I wasn't. Anyway, I want to go ahead and say, everybody, I'm getting off. Let me see if I can get this back. Oh, hey, let's see if we get some light. What do you know? Oh, okay. So, ah, that was it. It's been on. All right, y'all have a good day. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, in the Bible, actually, by the way, Jesus was an Essene, and the Essenes ended up not doing so well afterwards. As a matter of fact, I believe they were one of the groups that were taken out by the Knight of 500 Knives. If you're not familiar with that, like the Cathars, there are people in the past that when they spoke up, they got eliminated, but they did it in a very clever way. What would that be? They made sure everybody had an assistant, an aide, a right-hand man ah, from Rome, of course. And what would they do? Well, they would help make sure that Christianity was being taken care of, the leaders were being taken care of, and watched over, and all their words recorded. And then, guess what happened? One night, like Star Wars, the night of 500 knives, 500 throats got slit, eliminated, and then there were no more. That tribe was gone. That culture, or cult, depending on the size of your group, your community. The Essenes, people don't realize that, believed in all natural things, including oils, THC, and other things. Learn, understand. They believed in Christ consciousness before Jesus Christ got that name. It was 200 years after he was put on the cross, before the story started that he went from the cross straight to heaven. Before that, the stories were of Mary and the doctor who put him in the tomb that night and dressed him before he disappeared. So, after eight and a half hours on the cross, which, unfortunately, is a horrible experience, um, most lasted 24 hours. But if you're in a coma and didn't bleed and didn't show any pain, you look like you were dead, then that's another story. Mary, a woman boils. And part of their culture in the Essenes was a ritual that would put you in a coma for a day. Imagine that. 
all the stories were told. King James, a black man by genetics, rewrote the story. Many people died. Please. Jesus spoke of the light within, of the Father, of the heart, of the gut, that we combine our instincts in our heart, that inner light. The filament that fires up this gelatinous shell of structural water. Please, watch Dr. Pollock. Find out that this is water. 90% of the muscle that you see is water. Structural water. Meaning that when you see a muscle, that's 90% water. When you see it and you understand that you express yourself with structural water and clay and a bunch of bugs that we share this with. Please, savor the moment. Honor thy vessel. Learn the Tibetans taught you things, still do, if they don't all get killed off by the Chinese. Why do some people stay healthy? Why did the Falun Gong followers, 90 million strong, doing splits at 80 years old on the park benches on Saturdays all over the country. Why? Because it's not just your hair. Those are antennas. And I said this about hair to start with, I'm going to end it with this. Did you know that in the old days when a conqueror came, what males didn't get killed or turned into eunuchs were shaved head and face and required to stay so as a slave so they were easily identifiable. Now, royalty, that's another story. Now, nah. now a beard, likewise, our antenna. But in this day and age in America, you're a crazy man. You got long hair. Now beards are coming back. Why? Perhaps because most of the wise men, all the gods, yeah, Michelangelo, Drew, seeing guys with crew cuts, Marines, no, because you can't feel. Why do women make good leaders sometimes? Sometimes. Because they can feel differently than males. Why did Indians, Native Americans, who joined to fight when they shaved their head, they lost their ability to work their way through the woods and talk to nature and feel instinctually what's going on? Because hair is an antenna. So ladies, I said this is mostly for you. Why? Because you tend to keep your hair. You're the wise woman. And you know in the old days, if you had long hair, really long hair, you're probably one of those wise women that got put underwater to see if you're a witch. Now, if you didn't drown, you're a witch. If you did drown, well, you weren't a witch. Beat the stake and being burned. But lessons learned. Stay low. Shine bright. And be the example. Let's see if we can do it right this time, okay? For anybody that's been here before, welcome back. I'll see you later. I can push the button. Ah.